Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Goodbye, dear. Pam, where are we going at 3 o'clock this afternoon? And who is picking who up in whose car? Oh, I thought you knew. Lily Storm, the actress. You know, she's such a wonderful person. She invited us to the country for the weekend. Oh, no. She's picking us up right after her broadcast. Pam, how can you do this to me? The whole weekend, gone before it started. But, darling, I accepted because of you. The country air will do you good. But I like city air. I like gasoline smells and smoke and dust and hot pavements. Very well. I'll call Lily and tell her we can't come. After all, a wife's place is with her husband, even though it is in a hot, sultry apartment and the heat makes her ill. You win. Maybe they have an old barn where I can crawl in the hay and sleep all day Sunday. They do have an old barn. Here's a picture of the house. Isn't it adorable? It's so rustic and primitive. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. And Lily on the front veranda. She certainly looks her age in that picture. That isn't Lily. That's her housekeeper, Mrs. Sherwood. She's a wonderful cook. She's practically famous for her pies. Come in, Joe. Door's unlocked. Put the groceries on the floor. I'll be... Oh... I thought you were the grocery boy. Uh, Lily here yet? If you mean Miss Stone, no. Who are you? Uh, it's all right. Don't get excited now. What do you want? Well, uh, could use a little scotch. Where do you keep the liquor around here? We'll soon put a stop to this. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Who are you? You've no right to be here. Well, I got every right in the world to be here. You see, Miss Storm is my wife. Your wife. I've been with Miss Storm for years. That's ridiculous. I knew both her husbands. Yeah, well, I'm the one she didn't get rid of. You ever hear a talk of Blair Martin? Never. And I don't believe you. Uh, don't try that trick again. Now, Lily's on her way down here with her new boyfriend, Ashley Lockwood. When they get here, there's going to be a showdown. Now, if Lily comes back to me, why, we might keep you on as cook. Now, come on, tell me, where do you keep the liquor? I'll get it for you. Oh, wait a minute. There must be another phone out there, and I'm sure there's a front door. <laughs> no, I'll get the liquor. You just tell me where it is. First door to your right, beyond the stairway. And no tricks. And stay away from that phone. I got big ears. Lockwood residence, isn't it? He isn't there. When will he be back? Oh, could you take a message? It's urgent. Miss Storm is in terrible trouble. Please tell Mr. Lockwood. Oh, just smell that air, will you? Oh, I feel like Tessa the Durbervilles. The country always makes me feel so good, good, good. Ah, breathe, dear. I'm trying to. Let us fling wide the portals. Oh, dear. The door is locked. Well, maybe we should start back for town. Hannah, didn't Mrs. Sherwood expect us? I talked to Mrs. Sherwood this morning. She said everything was in order. And I'm sure it is. Uh, Jerry, you'll fall down. What? Fall down if you go to sleep standing up. I'm sorry, it's the country air. <laughs> I have a key somewhere here in my purse. Oh, what a nice efficient secretary. However, did I get along without you? 
there, that does it. Home sweet home. I'll throw single play. Oh, Jerry, I'll show you where to put the luggage. Oh, Miss Wilk, what a shame you must have dropped it in the car. Plus what? An earring, your minus an earring, the left one. Oh, I'm afraid it's just an affectation. I frequently wear just one earring. I don't understand it at all. The chickens are cleaned and in the refrigerator. Everything is in perfect order. But where is she? She cut herself a piece of pie. What? One of them's been cut into. Oh, but that's extraordinary. She never eats pies. She's one of those little women who loves to cook and eats like a bird. She must have been gone for some time. This butter's all melted. Oh, now I'm getting really worried. I'll phone Ashley. He lives only ten minutes from here. 135W, please. Well, what are you looking so smug and happy about? Dug up a little trouble? What is melted? What? Piece of pie is missing. Pam, you're not making sense. It's beginning to add up. There's been foul play. Oh, no, not this weekend. There's no answer. Now what's become of Ashley? You see? First Mrs. Sherwood disappears, and now Ashley. Who's next? Where's Hannah? Present. What's wrong? Nothing. Here's what adds up, Mrs. Holmes. Your kind old housekeeper's gone off on a bit of a bender. And with a very good start, I might add. Oh, but she doesn't drink. Weekends in the country do strange things to people. That must be Ashley. I'll go, Hannah. You haven't met Ashley yet, have you? He's the most wonderful writer. Tonight he'll read us his new play. Ashley. Lily, you all right? Why, of course I'm all right, now that you're here. I've been going crazy trying to find you. No answer here, no answer to your apartment. You're sure nothing's happened? Nothing but a missing housekeeper. Oh, I want you to meet Mrs. North. This is a very dear friend of mine, Ashley Lockwood. How do you do? I'm delighted, Mrs. North. You mean there's still no sign of Mrs. Sherwood? Still? Did you know she was missing, Mr. Lockwood? Why, no, how could I? Except I've been phoning here all day and there's been no answer. Well, come along. Let's forget Mrs. Sherwood. This is a summer weekend, holiday time. Let us be gay. Let us be gay. Gary, this is my fiancé, Ashley Lockwood. Ashley, Mr. North. That's how you know I'll fix dinner, Miss Starr, and be ready right away. Oh, well, I'm actually glad Mrs. Sherwood has disappeared. This is going to be fun, fun, fun. I think we should call Lieutenant Wigand. Oh, Pam, don't be such a ghoul. Lieutenant Wigand? Who's he? A homicide lieutenant on the New York police force. Homicide? He's our closest friend and a very good man to have around when there's been foul play. Lily, does she mean this? Of course I mean it. If there's one thing Bill Wigand can do better than anyone, is find a missing person, dead or alive. And will you get your mind out of Scotland Yard, please? Well, look here, we don't want any police nosing around here, especially New York police. What's the matter with New York police? Well, Miss Storm's a well-known actress, a public figure. She, she doesn't want any notoriety. Darling, when an actress gets her name in print, that's publicity, not notoriety. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, look. I put the flour in with the sugar. <laughs> oh, oh, how clumsy. I'll clean it up. Where's the broom? Oh, over there in the closet by the door. No, oh, let's talk about police major jumpy. I suggest uh, we drop the subject. Right. You reflect the public apathy toward crime, Mr. Lockwood. I'll bet you've never written a good melodrama. God willing, I never shall. There's no melodrama in real life. <laughs> Lily, you didn't. Oh. She fainted. You got it? Yeah. Oh, get some water, some smelling salts, quickly. Jerry, is he? Oh, very much so. He's been stabbed. But, Jerry, it's the wrong body. Mrs. Sherwood is the one we're looking for. We don't even know this man. There's one thing I do know it's time to call Lieutenant Wigan. <laughs> That's all, Riley. See you back at headquarters. My car is here in the back. Oh, high at midnight. No wonder you knew your cops get ulcers. Well, that's not the only reason, Chief. <laughs> well, I guess that ties it up for the night. You mean we can get some sleep? If you've got a clear conscience. I guess that'll hold you for a while. <laughs> I've got to wait on the coroner's report. Then I'm going to have these statements of yours typed up and you'll be down to my office tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock and sign them. Oh, 9 o'clock. I can't get anything yet from Miss Storm. Doctor says she's too upset to talk. 
Very unusual condition for a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you dropped around, Lieutenant. Any time you get stuck, I'd be glad to run down to New York and reciprocate. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, Good night. And, uh, keep your doors and windows locked tonight. Remember, there's a murder still running around loose. Good night. Good night. Good night. How's Lily? She's snapping out of it. The doctor just left. He gave her a sedative to take. Oh, a good night's sleep will fix her up. Yeah, me too. Now she says she's hungry. I'll fix her some toast and tea. May I be of any assistance? Oh, forgive me, you two haven't met. Miss Wilk, this is Lieutenant Wigand, our closest friend. How do you do? Much better now. Say, where have you been hiding? Will you fill this for me? Surely. Where's Mr. Lockwood? Oh, he went home about ten minutes ago. Well, that's strange. What is? That he didn't wait to say good night to Miss Storm. She's been asking for him. Hannah, how long has Lily been engaged to Mr. Lockwood, and just what do you know about him? They're off and running. Oh, I thought I'd never get a moment alone with you. I told the others I was going home. Lily, I know who the murdered man was. He wrote me letters, threatening letters about our engagement. I finally told him if he ever annoyed either one of us again, I'd kill him with my bare hands. Oh, no. And now he's dead. Lily, you've got to realize what a spot we're in. I'll do anything, anything. Then tell me the truth. Where were you at one o'clock today? I was at the studio, of course. I had a broadcast at one o'clock. Can you prove that you were at the studio? Of course I can. I didn't leave until three o'clock. It's you I was worried about. I knew Blair was trying to contact you. He had an old program from some stock company out west. Your pictures were on the cover. Oh, I think we should go to the police and report the whole thing. No, no, not until we have to. As long as you have a solid alibi. He's dead. There's no one to connect him with your past life, as far as we know. What about Hannah? Oh, I trust her with my life. Mrs. Sherwood. He must have talked to her today. She knows. But she's disappeared. I've got a hunch she's somewhere around this house. Okay, give me a dish towel. That's what I like about you, dear. Whenever you do anything, you go into it whole hog. No, oh, I get it. You mean that cherry pie. See, there's another whole one in the icebox. I saw it. I think it's strawberry. Hannah says that one's for tomorrow. Well, we may not be alive tomorrow. Hear that? No. Sounds like it's coming from the cellar. Are you crazy? There's a loose murderer around here. That may be him. Come on. Down in that dark, strange cellar. Let's call Bill. Come Don't on. be a scaredy cat. Oh, the light switch doesn't work. There's a flashlight in the drawer of the bar. Get it. Hurry! All Choked me, and oh. then they heard you coming, and they disappeared.
a woman. It must be Mrs. Sherwood. Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Sherwood. I'm Mrs. North, remember? This is my husband, Mr. North, and he loved your cherry pie. Oh, thank God, thank God. You were saying you turned around and saw this man. Had you ever seen him before? Never laid eyes on him. I said to him, who are you and what do you want? And he said... Yes? He said what? They asked me where the liquor was. I could tell he'd been drinking. That isn't what you were about to say. Now, Mrs. Sherwood, it's very important we find out who this man was and why he came here. You see, he, he's been murdered. I know. You mean you saw it? No, I heard it. When I came to, I found myself in the cellar. Upstairs, I heard voices. He was shouting at someone. Could you recognize the other voice? No, but it sounded like a woman. And then there was a thud. And then... Like a body falling down. Get some brandy. What are you trying to do, Wigan? Show what a good cop you are? This woman's suffering from shock. No, no, take it easy. Hmm. There she is. Nothing like a little eye-opener, I always say. Hmm. Now, Mrs. Sherwood, could you answer one or two more questions? I never saw anything so inhuman in my life. I'll go and bring the doctor here. No, Ashley. No. You say you heard a thud. Then what? I must have fainted. How long I was unconscious, I don't know. But when I came to, there was someone else walking around in the kitchen. Well, could you tell if it was a man or a woman? A man. Every step. He was dragging something along the floor like... like a body. The woman's had a terrible experience. Her imagination's been playing tricks on her. She wasn't playing tricks when I telephoned your house this noontime. You didn't talk to me on the telephone this noontime. No. But I left an urgent message for you about Miss Storm. It's no use, Ashley. They might as well know the whole story. The murdered man was my husband. His name was Blair Martin. I thought I had divorced him. It was a pure case of blackmail. He claimed that his final divorce decree had never been received, that Lily's two subsequent marriages were bigamous, and that he was still a legal husband. You were engaged to Miss Storm. Naturally, you figured the quickest way to solve your problem was to get rid of Blair Martin. No. I admit I was here before today. Blair Martin was already dead. He was lying on the kitchen floor here. I tried to hide the body. Why? Don't you see? He was trying to protect me. Why, did you kill him? She couldn't have. She was at the broadcasting station until nearly three o'clock this afternoon. Her secretary can prove that. I found this theater program on Martin's body with their pictures as man and wife. I heard the grocery truck drive up and got panicky. I opened the closet door and stuffed the body inside. Then I ran out into the hall. I think that ties it up all nice and neat. Smooth work, Lieutenant, smooth work. Guess I'll have to start eating pie at night. Mr. Lockwood, I'm holding you for the murder of Blair Martin. No! No, he's only trying to protect me. I killed him. What with? A knife. Yes. I killed him with a knife. Sorry, Miss Storm. He was stabbed with a knife, pig. like a piece of pie? Huh? You said a while ago you'd like a piece of pie. I'll bring it up with a glass of milk. I always think better when my stomach's full. Now, Pam, you're not going to snoop around this house after dark. You remember what happened in the cellar? Everyone's asleep. I'm just going down to the kitchen. Yeah, but...
that's what you're looking for, Miss Wilk? I think you must have lost it while you were struggling with Blair Martin. Then you didn't have much time to search for it, did you? Because you heard Mr. Lockwood come back. As he came in the back door, you went out the front and ran to wherever your car was hidden. You had to get back to Lily before she finished at the broadcasting station. I noticed what a good driver you were on the way down. You must have gotten back in nothing flat. You're very clever, Mrs. North. And I'd always thought you rather stupid. Why did you kill him? I thought you had everything figured out. Or perhaps you've never heard the one about a woman scorned. You're in love with him, is that why? That's why. I helped him. I gave him money. I kept Lily from turning him over to the police, only to find out he was using me to get back to Lily again. I came here this morning, knowing what he had planned to do. I pleaded with him. He humiliated me. He laughed at me. He laughed in my face. Sorry, believe me, I'm so sorry for you. You're sorry for me? Why don't you tell everything to Lieutenant Wigand? I'm sure he can help you. I don't intend to tell anyone. But neither do you. Now get back in that closet like a good little girl. And don't start screaming until you hear that car start. But you're only making things worse for yourself. You'll never get away with it. I can try. You remarked yourself I was a pretty good driver. Now get in there before I have to hurt you. No, I'm not going to let you go. Oh, no, Gary! Gary! Told me so herself. I found her earring. Here. You go upstairs, Pam. I'll call the police. Sorry, Miss Wilk. I really am sorry. Jerry! Jerry, wake up! I solved it! Just put the pie down there. It, it was Hannah Wilk all the time. A woman scorned. She did it. Yes, dear. If it hadn't been for Bill, I don't know what would have happened to me. We'll talk all about it in the morning, darling. Oh, dear, very well. It seemed so exciting. I nearly lost my life. Yes, dear. She nearly stabbed me with that ice pick. If I hadn't used my brains, I'd be dead. You'd have a corpse for a wife. Yes, dear. Well, I'm glad she didn't kill me. We'll talk all about it in the morning. I'm glad she didn't carry it to Kill you? Who tried to kill you? Good night, dear. Pam, what were you talking about? Tell me. Jerry, I've had a very strenuous evening. It made me very sleepy. We'll talk about it in the morning. Yeah, but Pam... Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy, a John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSale. This has been a film presentation.